Open our mind, open our understanding. May we see Jesus as our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you again. And I'm going to uh, uh, turn the time over to uh, Pastor Jan and um, that uh, she will uh, begin our study. So go for it, Pastor Jan. Thank you. Um, as a Christian, do you think our life should be different than when we did not profess to be followers of Jesus? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And is it something that we manufacture or is it because God is living in us? Because God is living in us. Yeah, absolutely. And so today as we, as we look at this lesson, I want you to have the perspective that Jesus is the one who transforms us. Jesus is the one who changes us. Jesus is the one who motivates us. Jesus is the one who changes our desires and all of that. I, I told a friend of mine once that I studied with, I said, you know, I kill as much as I want. I steal as much as I want. I commit <clears throat> adultery just as much as I want. The thing is, because Jesus is in my life, I don't want to do those things. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus makes a difference in our life. Jesus changes what you know, mm -hmm. just how we see the world and how we perceive things. And so I want you to keep in mind that the, we really need to keep our focus on Jesus. Mm -hmm. So let's begin by saying what changes happen when I accept Jesus. Second Corinthians 517. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away behold all things have become new isn't that wonderful old things have passed away all things become new today i was reading in um one of our adventist publications about a, a motivational speaker she had been in jail for selling drugs and she got acquainted with Jesus and Jesus changed her life, transformed it. Now she is a motivational speaker to other young women, other young people about what God can do in their lives to change them and transform them and, and the choices they make and the difference it makes. God changed her life from one of selling drugs to being one who sells Jesus Christ in a relationship mm -hmm. with him. And, you know, not, you know, I, I want to say selling Jesus in, in the right kind of way. I mean, you know, just promoting it. Um, she's truly become a fisher of men. So let's take a look at the next text. What wonderful experience will we have? First Thessalonians 5.23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may you, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, what does that word sanctify mean? Do you remember what we've, we've talked about, what sanctify means? To be set aside? Yeah, to be set aside. It's to be set aside, not, not just set aside, but set aside for a holy purpose. Mm -hmm. for a holy and purpose. so when we have a relationship with God, we are being set aside for a holy purpose. One where he wants, you know, to dwell in us. We, you know, we studied earlier about how we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so he is doing this transforming. He is taking us and setting us aside us for a holy purpose for him and he he is the one who does that so what is the correct attitude when facing trials um let's take a look at first peter 4 12 and 13 
Be beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceedingly joy. I don't know about you, but, you know, somehow in our lives, a lot of times we have this Pollyanna type attitude. We think that if we're a Christian, nothing should bad should happen to us. Mm -hmm. You know, life should be hunky dory. You know, we should be going along smoothly, but Peter tells us otherwise. He says, don't be surprised when you, when you run into trouble, you know, because Satan is our adversary. He's out there, you know, seeking whom he may de devour. So don't be surprised when the fiery trouble trial comes. You know, the three Hebrews uh, mentioned in Daniel, they were loyal to God and it caused them to go in the fiery furnace. But who was in the furnace with them? Jesus. Jesus was in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. You know, so he says, don't be surprised. You know, when, when troubles come, you know, um, but be joyful, be thankful that, you know, you're at peace with God. So how about a devotional life? What should happen um, as far as our devotional life? Let's take a look at Deuteronomy 17, 19. <laughs> and it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear, fear the Lord, his God, and be careful to observe all the words of this law and these statutes. So, you know, another place, you know, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it's important. It's important for us to spend time in the word every day. Just like we need physical food to survive, we need spiritual food to survive too. And so I want to encourage you, if you are not having daily devotions, if you're not spending daily some time in the Word, begin to do that. Um, because when we feast on God's Word, that begins to make a difference in our life. It, it reframes you know, our thought patterns, our, our desires, our changes. As we spend time looking to Jesus, he's the one that transforms us. How do we establish communion with God? First Peter 4, 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Okay, so we communicate with God through our prayers. Um, you know, we, we don't know how long we're going to live. We don't know what's going to happen in our lives. But we can be secure in our relationship with Jesus. We can talk to him. That's the way we communicate and we develop friendship with God. You know, um, you think about it. Um, we may have friends that we only talk to once every, you know, year or six months or, you know, a couple months. And we kind of pick up where we left off. But if we really want a relationship, a deep relationship with somebody, we, we need to communicate with them all the time. And the same is true with God, you know, to to really, you know, spend that time with him. And it's not that he needs us to talk to him, but we need to be in his presence and to have that time with him that he can do that transforming as we just give him our joys and our burdens and our sorrows and, and our thanksgivings, you know, um, and our petitions that he, he will be there for us. And we, begin to experience the uh, joy of communion with him. So a life of worship. Let's take a look at Isaiah 58, 12 to 14. 
It says, what day is dedicated to worshiping God? Isaiah 58, 12 to 14. Someone read that, please. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restore streets to dwell in. If you turn away, for, away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, do not, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, so God says to honor him, um, not doing our own ways or finding our own pleasures of restoring the breach. Um, and, you know, it's his desire for us to have this special relationship with them on Sabbath and um, to spend that time in a restored relationship with him. Um, number seven, what is the ideal place for worshiping God? Luke 4, 16. And this is where Jesus, Jesus example for us. Luke 4, 16. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. I, I like the illustration um, that a preacher once did there in England. There was a gentleman who had quit attending church, an elderly man, and he went to visit the man. And the man let him in, and they sat down in front of the fire. And uh, after a little bit of silence, the minister took the, um, oh, what, what's it called? The, you know, the, the thing you stir the fire with? He separated like the poker? The, yeah, the poker. And he, he separated the logs. And they just sat there in silence. And what do you think happened to the logs? They burned out. Yeah, they burned out. They needed the, the heat. They needed both of the logs, the logs to be together to have that collective heat and that collective warmth. And the same is true in the church. You know, we need the support of each other. It helps encourage us. And when we're isolated, it, yes, it's possible to have a relationship with Jesus. But, you know, we are encouraged with each other as we worship together, as we fellowship. And so God wants to encourage us to stay in communion um, but the coronavirus isn't helping us right now from that perspective. No, it's not. But at least we're getting together over the... Um, but we have this. We have the Zoom, and that's me. Yeah. I beg to differ. I think I'm learning a lot So about the Bible. So I beg to differ. And talking to people maybe more so. No, I was talking about from the perspective of coming together in terms of physical fellowship. <laughs> Obviously, the pandemic isn't helping. I would totally agree. I believe that this pandemic um, has given us an incredible opportunity uh, to renew our faith in Jesus, our study time. Um, I think it has been beneficial for so many people, and I think each of you would probably, mm -hmm. excuse me, would probably agree with that. Yes. Oh, I absolutely agree. But absolutely. there is still something special about meeting together 
and about the fellowship that happens when we do meet together. And we praise the Lord together and we encourage each other. All right, let's go on. How about our Christian witness? What mission did God entrust uh, to us? Let's take a look at two texts in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Okay, and let's take a look at the second passage, Matthew 28, 19. Uh, go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the gospel, the good news, the good news about Jesus' death on the cross, his, his um, death and his life, and his saving grace is to be, be preached to everyone everywhere. And we may not be able to go to everyone or everywhere, but what can we do? We can be a witness, and sometimes our witness is with words. Sometimes our witness is silent by our life. You know, people see the changes in us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we just are a witness one way or the other. You know, and so when we get to know Jesus, he's the one. And I often just pray, Lord, use me today in whatever way you see. I am yours. And if I can help somebody, if I can cheer somebody, if I can smile at somebody, or if I can use my words to make a difference in somebody's life, use me. Because I want to be a witness for you. And so... You know, God has called each of us to be a witness for what he's doing in our lives. Okay, what essential preparation must we have? 1 Peter 3.15. I'll read it. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And I want to say this about, you know, this text. It says, be always ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you. You don't need to know all the answers. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will teach us what to say and what, to, what not to say. The Holy Spirit will help us in every situation all we have to do is say lord you know give me give me what you want me to to do in this situation or what to say in this situation but as we spend time with jesus it starts it starts transforming us and changing us and and god will put those words those thoughts in our mind and he will prompt us when to say them and when not to say them it's not something we have to manufacture on our own it's something that god will do in us and through us um that's the exciting part uh, of of sharing because it's not about us it's about him and he will direct us okay we will look now at... Uh, do you want to look at this passage of scripture uh, here in... Um, I was trying to find it. Where is it? In uh, John, is it John 16? Okay. Uh, well, he's looking for the text. I just want to say, you know, God is, is so good and so faithful. As we spend time in his word, he will, he will bring those thoughts to our mind when we need them. He will lead us and guide us. We, it's not something we have to stew about or think, oh, man, I've got to be a witness for God today. I mean, we're just a witness when we have a relationship with him. I mean, it, we know what he's doing in our lives, and um, he, he will 
it will just prompt us. So we don't have, it's not something we have to manufacture or, or be fearful about. Jan, isn't it like in every little thing that we do throughout the day, such as being kind and loving to our neighbors, uh, not necessarily our next door neighbors, but people that, you know, uh, say, uh, I don't I don't know, just being respectful and kind and loving and, and uh, I've, I've talked to people lately, just yesterday, I talked to, to a gentleman and a woman that had a cute little puppy and I was talking to them and um, they, the gentleman was saying how much he didn't like California and he now lived in Nevada. And um, we got, he got deep in the conversation and um, I asked him what faith he was he believed and uh he said he was mormon you know and i i told him you know i'm a son of the adventist and they knew of of us and he goes you go to you go on saturday right and i go yes you know so you know just being kind and considerate i passed uh over a basket to him and had wipes to wipe it off and you know just doing things and having conversations with people um I, just are just being kind to somebody like my neighbors they're so much more loving now that i brought them stuff through covid and i'm able to approach them better it's just such a wonderful thing when you have loving kindness around you absolutely you know i um becky straba and i um we went to the grocery store one day when we were I'm preparing to do um, See Me Fit. And um, Becky saw this wallet um, on the ground before we entered the parking lot. And so, you know, we had an opportunity to, and, and there was quite a bit of money in it, several hundred dollars. And so um, there was no phone number to which to call. So I called the police to have them deliver it to, back to the person. And um, the, the policeman came and he goes, wow, you're such an honest person. And I said, well, I better be an honest person. <laughs> I said, um, and he goes, oh, why? I said, because I'm a pastor. And, <laughs> you know, he started in and he preached me a sermon. Um, it, it was hilarious. I mean, I had a hard time getting away from him. He went on and on about being a Christian and, and, you know, what Christians should be like. And it was, it was really, it was really interesting, but you know, all of that is, you know, I mean, I, I didn't have to do that, but as a Christian, I did, you know, I wanted to do the right thing. And so, you know, we are, we're, we're a witness no matter what. Um, here we are in John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. So when we're spending time in the word, God will use the Holy Spirit to bring those thoughts back to us. So we don't need to, to worry about you know, being a witness for Jesus. What do I say here? God's going to give us the right thing to say. And it's okay to say, you know, I really don't fully know how to answer you on that. Let me get back to you. I mean, we can always go back and study and, and have an opportunity to share more. So well, I just want to assure you that it this is being a witness is nothing to be scared about it's just a response of how jesus is working in our lives but well, i wanted to say something uh to follow up with laura you know laura was talking about uh the need to be kind to other people but laura don't forget you know we need to be kind to furballs too <laughs> i know i know, <laughs> I know. lucky my kitty just cries and cries and cries all the time especially when carl comes home and she needs lots of love so i hear you on that one <laughs> okay i just wanted to make sure that we have our priorities straight here hey and thank you for that passage i really like that passage too you know that really helped me too yeah and no more throwing and kicking the cat in the pool <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Only I didn't do it on purpose. I told Julie and she says, oh, that's what's wrong with her. <laughs> Poor Judy. You know, she actually came back to me after she dried off and she curled up next to me. So she didn't take offense. <laughs> uh, All right. I don't remember where I was. Ten. Ten. Okay. So Careful number guy. ten. Who are our human guides? Oh, we read that one. Okay, let's go to, oh yeah. First Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong text. First Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13, someone read it. I can read it. Um, okay, is that, first of all, is that low enough, Eric? Can you see? <laughs> Uh, is it the green? No. I can oh, see wow. perfectly the second line down. So. A little bit more down then. Okay, then okay. how about that? You can go up a little bit higher. It's like it's like one one third, yeah, two thirds of the way down. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Hey, or, Eric, you yeah, want to read it? You read it, Eric. Yeah me yes okay and we urge you brethren brethren to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake be at peace among yourselves all right so god god wants us to be respectful of those who um are are those who are teaching us and um to be at peace with each other and who is our supreme guide colossians 2 6 and 7. as you therefore have received christ jesus the lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding it in it with thanksgiving that text reminds me of Psalm 1 where it talks about a tree, you know, sending down its roots and it's not afraid in the dry seasons. We need to be rooted and founded in Jesus. You know, uh, when we get nourishment from him, like a plant gets nourishment from the water and the soil, you know, so we get our nourishment from Jesus and that and that strengthens us as believers and i pray that it's your desire that god um you believe in god's help and in following jesus and you will strive to le live an upright christian life you know it's not about what we do it's about what he's doing in us as we just spend that time in his presence as we let him speak to our hearts as we grow in him and as we share um what what happens with the additional study let's just take a couple of looks at, at the additional study in the back and I'm, again i'm not going to go over everything but i love that that first text that's mentioned there under a holy life um it says in matthew 6 33 seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you you know when we put god first in our lives he gives us what we need um, to grow in him and um god is is willing to do that work in us um life at home should our life at home be different because we have a relationship with jesus and i believe it is you know um that um it, it mentions here ephesians 22 to 29 and it talks about the responsibilities of husbands of wives of children um where we put others first you know um it says husbands love your wives even as god you know loved his church 
And, um, you know, when we put each other first in life, when we um, have that um, in our lives, there, there is more peace. Um, and uh, it says for children, children obey your parents in the Lord. Um, and, and so as the family submits themselves to Jesus, you know, serving each other, our homes can be a place, a little haven of, of heaven. Um, our social life, um, it affects our social life. You know, we choose the things that honor Jesus. Um, we're careful with our words and our tongue. Let's take a look at Matthew 537. But let your yes be yes and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. And, you know, it talks about not swearing. It talks about, you know, um, just, you know, letting, letting our, our words be a form of blessing. Um, Matthew 7, 12 is called the golden rule. Um, and Pastor Phil has, has a, a saying for a platinum rule. Pastor Phil, you want to share that? The golden rule is whatever we wish to have done for us, we must do for others. But what's the platinum rule, Pastor Phil? Okay, so take a look at this, uh, this one here first. Um, uh, in uh, the golden rule. Um, so uh, Matthew uh, chapter 7 and verse 12, therefore whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. But now let's take a look at um, Matthew 10, um, let's see, I want Matthew 10, is it verse 12? Let me see. I'm sorry. No, it isn't. Right here. Matthew 10 and verse 5. Um, I'll read actually, uh, let me, let me go up. Yeah. Um, these 12, <clears throat> these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the uh, way um, uh, of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, uh, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And I like to refer to that as the platinum rule. The golden rule says to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, but the platinum rule says freely you have received, freely give. Okay, thank you. So, you know, we talk about the spiritual life. What, what kinds of things help us feed us spiritually? We talked about having a devotional life. We talked about worship services. There it mentions, um, and, and we as Seventh-day Adventists have um, a, a study time we call Sabbath School. And uh, we do a systematic study of the Bible. Um, and that's a, another way for us to grow um, together as a church family, as we um, look at the same topic, as we study together, as we learn from each other. Um, often there's um, young people's meetings um, on Sabbath afternoons, Pathfinders, which is a lot like Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Um, Wednesday night, we usually have prayer meetings when we meet together. We make just do that on Zoom as time goes. But all of these things add to our spiritual um, growth and um, of being together and of encouraging each other and praying for each other. Um, then there's other things for our spiritual life. You know, um, it's understanding that, um, you know, in the church, the church organization is the church, um, church board decides the matters. 
we have business sessions, you know, every once in a while where we as a church gather together and make decisions. Um, and we're going to talk about more um, how, how we support the church through tithes and offerings. That's another lesson we'll be looking at. And missionary work. I mean, we're all called to be missionaries. You know, our mission may be different. Our mission may be those around us, or it may be our work environment. But in every way, God wants to use us to, to share um, what he's doing in our lives. Um, the, in the Adventist church, we, we, have a, uh, we have churches all over the world. Um, there's a few countries where we're not allowed to have organized churches, and we may have underground churches in some of those places. But it is a worldwide church. We believe the gospel needs to go to everyone, everywhere, um, that they need to hear the good news of Jesus, and he's commissioned us to do that. And um, uh, oftentimes we call each other brother and sister in the church, we're united by the same faith, the same hope. Um, we love each other. We help each other in brotherly love. We, we um, should look to ways of ministering to our community, of, of sharing Jesus. Um, you know, some of our, um, sometimes we get together and do free clinics, or sometimes we, we, you know, in our church here locally, we have a medical closet where we, um, we, um, what's the word I, I want? Um, we, we, um, give supplies for people that need it, crutches, um, uh, walkers, you know, many different things like that, hospital beds. And so we provide services for people that can't afford to, to get the, those supplies. And so there's many different ways where churches can serve their communities. And um, God calls us to, to be um, ministers in our own community of, of his love and his compassion. And so we do, why do we do it? We do it because Jesus has commissioned us. He's told us, you know, that we're a witness for him. He wants us to share his love with those around us. And God is the one who empowers us who gives us the ideas, who um, strengthens us in this process. So I encourage you, you know, as you spend time with him, that he will show you ways in which you can minister to those around you. Any questions? Does it make sense? Yes, it does. It does make sense. Okay. Can I, uh, can I say something real quick? I'll, I'll try to be real quick. Um, uh, my mom is now uh, in a new room because she is on the next set of the quarantine, which she's free of COVID and now into the uh, quarantine stage where she's 14 more days in another room with the only other lady that had COVID. There's no more COVID in that facility. Oh. Amen. <laughs> um, and she's so happy. I, gave, I got her her big box care package today and uh, bless, bless them for allowing me to do this. And she is so tickled. Uh, she got some uh, steps to Christ and that she has them in Spanish and English now and uh, the man that does the FaceTiming with between her and I she's going to make sure that he gets uh, one in Spanish because he can't speak English really well so she's going to make sure that he gets one and she's trying his name is Fernando she's trying to, to um, pray for Fernando and talk to him as much as she can um, and so uh, I want to thank you for your prayers for my mom and continue for everyone. Uh, we only have one employee that still has COVID, uh, but that person's not in the facility. And um, I just want to praise God. Um, 
and I didn't find out anything today about my heart. I'm supposed to find out tomorrow. So thank you, and I wanted to tell you that. Well, thank you, thank you, Laura, and thank you. What you just shared was a classic example. You take a look at your mother, and uh, with all of the challenges that she's faced, and she still wanted to share her Christian journey with other people, and that kind of goes along the line of what we were talking about today. So thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you to each of you. Are there any other questions that any of you have tonight? I just want to say a few things to continue to encourage your journey. Uh, Pastor Jan referred to the uh, Saturday morning uh, Bible study time we have, and uh, we're actually launching a new study beginning this week. Um, and that study is going to cover um, the, the subject matter of um, how do you share your faith uh, with Jesus? How do you share what God has done in your life uh, with others around you? And so um, the study uh, that launches this week is Making Friends for God, The Joy of Sharing His Mission. And uh, this week is the subject of Why Witness? Um, why should you bother to tell other people what you've just been learning? So anyway, uh, that's this coming Saturday morning at 9.30. Uh, we're going to have a special guest, uh, Dr. Joe Kidder. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a professor at one of our Seventh-day Adventist universities, and this is right down his alley. Uh, he teaches practical theology and um, how to share Jesus with other people, and I think you will find him to be very fascinating. Uh, he's been a longtime friend of mine. Uh, I went to college with him way back in the, mid, uh, in the late 1970s, and so uh, I have known him for a number of years and look forward to him uh, participating and joining us in. So hope that you can join us uh, this coming Saturday uh, morning for that time. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. And um, I am going to ask uh, Pastor Jan to have a final word of prayer. And then uh, I have one more thing that I want to share with you at the end. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for everything that you have done for us and what you are going to continue to do in us. Father, we thank you that you have set us aside for a holy purpose and that you desire to, to use us as witnesses. Father, we feel so inadequate for that. We think the angels would be much better witnesses of you because they've never fallen and they don't make mistakes. But you instead choose to use us, frail human beings, and you promise to do that through us and in us. So thank you, Father, and help us to just have that confidence that you who began that good work in us will complete it. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for your grace in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.